the Lord is good. His mercies endure forever. And today we continue to receive from him as we exalt his holy name. We receive what he's sharing with us on kingdom culture. The Lord is taking his time to give us this course. Already we're on lesson 33 on this course. From after the day after open gate, here we are. Kingdom culture component number 23 today, the expansive nature of prayer. We've talked about prayer before, but the Lord has something important he wants to release to us today. And if there is time, look at the golden rule of relationships. Let's pray. Father in heaven, just have your way and that which you want to give to us, give it to us because we are your children. Have your way. Thank you, Father, for we know you do so. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. In an earlier lesson we shared last week, we considered how Yeshua in Matthew 6 from verse, you know, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, began to prescribe a pattern of prayer for his saints, you know, all the way to 14. Then we consider that through prayer, saints in the air dream have a sure, secure means of communicating with the headquarters of the kingdom, which is the throne of grace in the heavenly realm. And in that pattern of prayer, the king made it clear that the will of the Father should drive our communion with him. What was not adequately addressed in that lesson is what the Lord wants to bring forth in this lesson today in Matthew chapter 7, 7 to 11. And why is it important? Many times, teachers and preachers, including myself, by overemphasizing that Matthew 16 factor and not taking time to talk about other dimensions of prayer, some people go around when they have issues, the attitude is that of fatalism. Well, what will be, will be. Well, if it's the will of the Lord, he'll give it to me. And that approach actually negates the fullness of understanding of prayer. Because what the Lord is saying there, we want to be in his will. Because if we're in his will, we are blessed. And if we're in his will, whatever we pray, we answer. But then the Lord also, in this place, wants to give us something important. That as members of his family in the earth realm, citizens of the kingdom, the king grants us wide latitude to come boldly to the throne of grace when we have needs that are peculiar to us. There are needs that are peculiar to us. There are needs that are peculiar to married people. There are needs peculiar to single people. There are needs peculiar to young brothers. There are needs peculiar to young sisters. There are needs peculiar to students. There are needs peculiar to work people. There are needs peculiar to those in the marketplace. And when you meet those needs, what is it the Lord is saying today? This lesson, there's something important I believe the Lord wants to release. Let's receive it. When Elohim created heaven and earth, he made a conscious decision to reserve heaven for himself, the earth dream he gave to the sons of men. That's what Psalm 115 verse 16 says as an explanation of Genesis 1, 26 to 29. In the course of our work as priests and kings in the earth dream, we encounter situations and issues in which Elohim grants us liberty to discern what is at stake and call on him for assistance and not just call on him, excuse me, but to persist in calling on him until that which is needful for our lives is received. So prayer, therefore, is not a one-size-fits-all formula. As we mature in him, we learn the need to pray all kinds of prayer appropriate to the situations we find ourselves in. As Ephesians 6, 18 says, all kinds of prayer, different types of prayer. One Thing needs to be clarified. This kind of prayer of supplication has to do with real needs, not mere wants or lusts, which represent carnality. The Lord is not asking us to lust after things that you know are need, not needful for our life. He's not promising to you know rubber stamp it for us, but he's talking about real needs. And the needs that are real are real. And it should be hard hearted for somebody to speak about somebody's need as if it's nothing. Everybody has a need. This morning, I tried to speak with somebody who grew up in the city where we grew up, came for the youth service, and I just 
had, you know, bypassing. The husband was dead, a very young lady. You know what? That need is real. How many years married? Husband passed on. The need is real. A peculiar, different from that of other women. And so I don't know your situation. I don't know your circumstance. I don't know things that ought to have happened for you. They've not happened. The Lord is saying, don't give up. Don't write off yourself. Don't just have a fatalistic attitude. If we understand the blank check nature of prayer and faith, then the Lord is saying that we have hope. Our king anticipated how the life gate of heaven will be open following the conclusion of his mission. He knew that after his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension to heaven, he will be clothed with glory and sit at the right hand of the Father, representing you and I at the throne of grace. So when any need arises in your life, and you call upon the Father in his name, he is there to tell the Father, I died for him, I died for her. He is there to affirm that you are one of his. And we tend to forget this, but the Lord wants us to kind of have it in our heart that right there at the throne of grace, among the Elohim, the Godhead, one has born flesh and blood and did not ascend like a ghost to heaven, did not ascend like a spirit to heaven, but that body, the Lord Bible say he ascended bodily. The people saw him moving up. Angels say, what are you going to look good kid? The same way he went up, that's where he's going to come down. He's going to come down in that bodily form to rule for a thousand years before handing over the kingdom to the Father. Brothers and sisters, it means we have a near kingsman at the throne of grace. And this is serious. When we understand this, you know what it will do to us? It's going to let loose our faith in the person of Yeshua. And what will happen? The word impossible should have no space in our mindset or in our lexicon or dictionary. A life of faith in him is a life of possibilities that are appropriated by a prayer life which is rich and fruitful. Now we come to Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. Ask, and it shall be given you. Ask, it shall be given you. Seek, you shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. So let's see the commentary here. Let us see the connection between our actions in obedience to what he says and heaven's responses. If we ask, he said, it shall be given. If we seek, we'll find. If we knock, the door will be open. So, asking is the act of telling the Father what you need, which we should do often. Everyone should be know the principle of asking the Father. Children should know. You don't just bubble into exam. Talk to the Father. Father, I have this exam coming. Lord, I need your grace. I need your mercy. I need your favor. May I write the things that will be marked. Even the person who will mark my papers, may he be disposed with a good heart and not have a bad day and then stumble upon my paper. Ask him. Ask according to your needs. Don't let anybody intimidate you. Don't let anybody divert you. Your needs. Your heavenly father says, ask that which is needful for you. Then he says, seek. This comes when the asking seems not to have produced immediate result. It doesn't then do we just say, okay, I've prayed. And there are some people in the name of teachers of faith, they tell you once you pray something, don't pray again. If you pray again, you are negating your faith. You believe that? You can believe any lie. Because a lie, it is contrary to Holy Scriptures. And we must come to the place where we do not rest our faith in the opinion of men, but in what the Word says. Stand on the Word. Elohim said it. You believe it. That settles it. Don't let anybody with their exotic ideas take you off course from the Word. Acts. And he says, that thing has not manifested. Seek. 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 Just as 
a woman lost a coin and sick everywhere, sweeping everywhere because that's the only thing she has. Seek that which you need from your Father in heaven. He made it so. The Lord doesn't want us to live apart from Him. He wants to live a life that is totally dependent on Him. He wants us to be people who resort to heaven often. Pray without season. And that includes that which you need. You have asked for. It has not come true. Persist unless you didn't need it. Then he says, knock. What does it mean to knock? It means to persist ceaselessly, unceasingly, even with desperation, holy desperation. Are those things that the Lord is you know, you know you need. He's your father. He loves you. The father wants the best for you. He wants you to complete in every way, emotionally complete, everything complete in you. What is that thing lacking in you? The Lord says, because he's been paid for by the blood of Yeshua, come boldly to the throne of grace. Persist until you get it. And that is why it's important that to recognize that the king stays this process matter of factly. The saint who refuses to take him on his word when going through is suggesting that Yeshua didn't know what he was promising. Is it not sad that rather than pray through, the flesh gets weak and slides into doubt, unbelief, and despair? Despair, the negative word. Desperation is the positive word. You are desperate for your father. You are asking your father, praying all kinds of prayer, fasting, releasing your faith, persisting. Despair is slump. Nothing. Slump. Is it not true that often the cause of action many choose to do is to elicit sympathy from brethren, from friends and family, and maybe get crumbs from them? Rather than crumbs, how about dining on your own table? Brothers and sisters, the Lord is challenging us to take serious prayer. Take prayer serious. There's an expansive dimension of prayer the Lord is calling us. Then in verse 8, he says, For everyone that asks it to receive it, matter of factly, and he that seek it, find it. To him that knock it, it shall be opened. I want to pray for everyone today on this meeting, even if this is where you listen to all, that today, that thing that is a need in your life, that is not yet manifested, didn't Yeshua said in John 16, 23, 24, hitherto you've asked nothing in my name, ask and receive, that your joy shall be full. Is it not him that said it? Can we not cling on him on his word and desperately cling on him and refuse to let go until there's manifestation. May I be permitted to make a declaration today that as long as the Lord liveth, his word shall come to pass in your life. Today, Saturday, today, this very day, may the grace of the Lord meet with your desperation. May the favor of the Lord clothe you May that which will make your joy full, Yeshua said in John 16, 23, 24, may there be for someone here a certain dating in the Spirit by which the miracle, because you believe this word of the Lord, not my word, this is his word, may there be joy, unlimited joy, bursting out of your life this year. Brothers and sisters, the Lord loves us and he wants us to be people who believe him for everything. Everything means everything. And when the Lord says everything, he means everything. Brothers and sisters, we need to come to that place where we are totally, completely reliant on his word. We depend on his word. We stand on his word. And he says, for everyone that asks it, receive it. Put your name there. And he that seeks it, find it. Put your name there. Somebody is going to receive. Somebody is about to find that which you needed all your life. Or for the past five years, three years, seven years. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. It is so important 
that we know that our journey of kingdom culture will not be complete until we plug into this awesome power source in the heavenly realm, the capacity to pray in faith and receive what we are needing. Whatever we do to get there is worth all the investment, studying the word, meditating upon the word until it becomes flesh and letting our faith loose. Didn't the word tell us in Hebrews chapter 10, 35, cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For we have need of patience that after we have done the will of Elohim, we may receive the promise. So supposing there's a will of Elohim that you have not done, you've been asking, may there be a revelation by Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit, to remind you of that thing. Maybe you made a commitment to the Lord. There are some people I know, some people in the Western world, when they were in Africa, they made commitment. They say, Lord, if only you take me to Europe, take me to the United States of America, I'm going to serve you, number one. Everything is secondary. The Father opened the door. They landed on a Thursday, Friday, they started working in a factory. Three years ago, five years ago, where's the work of the Lord? No. They are chasing the green bags. They are chasing. And supposing there's a, a, a something where there's a real warlike situation. Supposing the Lord then reminds you that commitment that you made a covenant with the Lord. Even in church, you did a thanksgiving. The day you got your visa. All that you forgot after seven years. The Lord reminds you, what of my promise with you? What of my covenant? If there's any commitment any of us made, oh, you were desperate, you needed a son, you needed a child, you needed to pray, Lord, give me. When this one comes like Hannah, I give you to you. And that son comes. You've forgotten all that covenant. And you are needing things and you come to a place where things kind of seem very stuck. And you are praying. The Holy Spirit shines a light. What do you do? You know, it's easy to make promise. That's why the Lord said, when you go to the house of the Lord, be quiet. Don't be, don't be, don't be mounty. Because there are many people, what is the problem is the promises made, the commitments made, they've forgotten. Now they have used logic. Brothers and sisters, he said, for yet a little while, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Can I say to single ladies hearing this, this is speaking about the Lord, but in the figure, he that shall come, shall come, shall not tarry. Get ready for somebody to put a ring on your finger. Get ready. It shall not be a mean person. It shall be one package from heaven. Get ready that your joy shall be full. Get ready that, brother, you have served the Lord. You're looking, you lose, you're trusting the Lord for wife. Have you really prayed? Have you really prayed and say, Father, now I'm a man. I need a wife with whom I'm going to live. Have you really prayed? She that shall come is coming. I will not tarry. There are times we got to know that we got to take the word of the Lord in a raw, childlike manner. No logic of, you know, people who are very advanced in their thinking. Come to the place where, just as he said, he said to be like little children and converted like children. We can't enter unless we are like children concerning the promises of the Lord. Some of them may tarry. It says, verse 38, Now the just shall live by faith, Hebrews 10, 38. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. May your soul never draw back. May he live by faith. So the king compares Yahweh with human parents. To drive home his point, Yeshua found it necessary to now compare our heavenly father with our earthly parents. Verse 9 of Matthew chapter 7. Or what man is there of you whom, if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? Which man would do that? He wants bread. Daddy, I need food. Daddy, I need bread. I need money for my pocket money. Will he give me a stone? No. 
Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? It's impossible. Even the most wicked people will not do that. Then he says in verse 11, If you then, being evil, human beings with their inherent sins, the Adamic nature and all that, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Listen to this. I can tell you this. In the place called the southeast of Nigeria, there are people there called the Igbos. Listen, you see a man who wears only one dress, a loincloth he ties, whose job is wine tapper. He climbs the trees to tap wine and sell. But that man who wears only a flip-flop on his leg, one flip-flop all year, has nothing, manages to scrape a little thing for himself. You see that same person train five people through high school, train two in the university, the two that train the university, they begin to help to train others from their very first salary. And through sacrifice, generations are taken care of. If human beings can do that, make that sacrifice. He said, what about Heavenly Father? If when you were a sinner, Yeshua came from heaven, died for you and I. How much more now you are in the family, you've received the benefit of his blood. Will the Father give you all things that pertain to life and godliness through him? We got to catch this revelation. It is so important we catch it. How much more Yeshua is asking us, will our Heavenly Father have empathy with our situation, empathize with our situation? How much more is He willing to answer our prayer? The same comparison between an omnipotent, omnibenevolent Elohim and humans is stated in another teaching. In Luke 18, the same principle, he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray, not to faint. That thing you are asking for, stop, stop, Stop stopping. <laughs> Stop stopping. The thing you prayed for last year, two years ago, three years ago, somehow you feel, well, I don't know whether the Lord really wants to. And you stop. No. Stop stopping. Keep going. He said, saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him, saying, avenge me my adversary came to the judge. And he would not for a while, but afterwards he said with himself, Do I fear not God, nor regard man? Yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. The Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge, a wicked man, said, Shall not Elohim avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he be along with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man shall come, when he cometh, shall he find faith on earth. May none of us pass up the opportunity to pray for divine intervention in all areas of our life, our health situations, provisions of our need, success in our endeavors, Marriage partners, wholesome marriages, children, breakthrough in your business, and coming to a place where you are no longer struggling and struggling. You are soaring. Coming to a place called irreversible breakthrough in your walk with the Lord. There is a place you can come with the Lord. You break through that. It cannot be taken down. You soar from glory to glory. Let us pray without ceasing until what is manifested is manifested. That's what it means to pray until something happens. First Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. Brother, sister, resume praying over that thing. The season is here. The doors are open. The life doors are open. Mark this day as you hear this thing. Go take your journal, the thing you stopped praying three years ago, bring it out again. Open that page before the Lord and daily remind the Lord, remind the Lord until it is done. Ephesians 6, 18 says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. There are times we don't even know all that we need. Brothers and sisters, it makes sense at such a time to let go and let Holy Spirit 
Who knows the mind of the Father? Who knows what he needs to tell us? Like we're told in Romans chapter 8, 26, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit maketh itself, maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart, know what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of the Father. Spirit and the Father and the Son, one Godhead. So if the Spirit is making intercession, that's why we must reject these cheap, you know, uh, tongues that are not inspired, that people learn, that people memorize. They just drop it, it means nothing. When we get the real deal, the Holy Spirit can take over your prayer life. He can just power over. The same principle in First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3, verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto Elohim. For no man understandeth him. How be it? In the spirit he speaketh mysteries. What Lord is saying, brothers and sisters, is we should not take Matthew 6.10 as a cop out to slide into a life of fatalism. We have parental consent from heaven. Yea, to design our needs and bring them to our Heavenly Father, who has given us a commitment that as we live for Him and His glory, He will always be there for us throughout the days of our pilgrimage. Read Romans 8, 28 to 39. He's there for you. Matthew 18, 18, Yeshua said, All power in heaven is given unto me, all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Then in verse 20, I'll be with you always till the end of the age. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as you have. For he said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Now give me a few minutes. Let me just tidy up the golden rule. Because we're now going to another section in the next lesson, another section. The golden rule is in Matthew 7, verse 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye so even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Do ye so. Do ye even so to them. This is the law and the prophets. Now, what's the commentary there? This rule is far more extensive than many apply it to. It includes everything. Invest in others what you will expect from them in terms of attitude, love, extension of hands of blessing. In the same way, it requires us, you know, whatever you want from others, what you would that men should do to you, do even so to them. This is not waiting for them to do. No, it is you, your attitude, your lifestyle, the consistency in what Elohim requires. Do it, it will come back to you. What you sow will come back to you. In the same way, it requires us to exercise mercy. When the people you expect come short of your expectation, just as we will love them to be merciful to us if we have failings. And all of us, there are areas we have failings. When we fail to forgive, we hinder our prayers. That's Matthew 6, 12 says, Forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors, Verse 14, for if you forgive not men their trespasses, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you also. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And Mark 11, that powerful scripture, verse 22 to 26, on moving mountains, speak to mountains, they will move. He said, but when you stand praying, first forgive, if you have ought against any. So your Father may forgive you your trespasses. For if you forgive not, neither will your heavenly Father, your Father which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. So it's an expansive principle. It's an extension of the law of seed time and harvest time. In Genesis 8.22, after the flood, the Lord gave that law to rule the entire, unit, the entire earth realm. Genesis 8.22, while the earth remained seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Galatians 6, 7, Be not deceived, Elohim is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh, shall also of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth of his spirit, shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. 
And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And if we have the, as we therefore have opportunity, let us do good to all men, especially the name of the household of faith. Brothers and sisters, if we understand the golden rule, we can reverse engineer any situation. Children, work colleagues, whatever we meet, we can reverse engineer negativity with positivity. We can let love cover multitude of sins, which is First Peter chapter four verse eight. We can reverse engineer every situation we find ourselves by simply taking the role of Messiah in the situation, pouring out our life as a drink offering. It will come back to us. But when we take it as something, an external thing, we justify ourselves and put the other people down. We really extend the scope of the difficult situations we find ourselves in. I hope the Lord has spoken to somebody today. I want to be able to say that some months from now, we're going to celebrate the fruit of faith inspired from this teaching today. Not because I'm teaching it, but because even myself here, there's an effervescence in my spirit of joy unspeakable because it cracked a knot. Like I said before, we can so overemphasize Matthew 6.10, we forget that there are other principles of prayer. There are other paradigms of prayer. And the Lord is saying, apply all paradigms to all situations. The important thing is, let it not be that you are desiring, you know, what we call vanities, lost. No. Like James chapter 4 said, no, that's not lost. But whatever is in need in your life, can I say to somebody, give me a shout out when that comes through. Today, release your faith and write down. Apostle George say. When this miracle of the world bearing fruit happens, remember to send a note. It is a done deal. I want to pray with somebody. Done deal arising from our faith, let loose. But before then, by way of assignment number one, share three things you learned about prayer for your pressing needs in this lesson. Two, summarize the golden rule, what you understood by it. And three, what really new thing did the Lord, act? what new thing did you learn today that you are holding on to going forward? Can we pray? Our Father in heaven, thank you, Father, glorious Father, faithful Father, the one who watches over your word to perform it, the one who gave Yeshua to die for us when we are yet sinners. Now that we are members of your family, you've challenged us today to come, to let our faith loose and our prayer life without limits and to receive from you. Lord, we come today. We come to cash the check. Even now, Lord, I pray in agreement of faith with my brothers and sisters across the world, all who will watch this video today and any time, Father, in the future, that as many as believe your word, Father in heaven, I pray for a very special window, seven to ten months of fulfillment of those things that have seemed naughty, that seem that is written off in their lives. Lord, let there be testimonies, unspeakable testimonies, testimonies that hold the mind, testimonies that bring revival. Let there be joy in the camp of the righteous because your word is true. We stand upon your word. Lord, we cover this prayer with the blood of the Lamb, O oh Lord. Even those who have weak faith, Father, let this word help to lift up their faith. Thank you because you are faithful beyond measure. We bless you and we will testify and share that which you have done today. You are faithful beyond measure. Holy Spirit, let the performance come that the word will be a full 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold in Yeshua's mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching and we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook, Monday, 
all the way to Sunday every day by about 10 30 a.m uk time and that's the same of nigerian time and you it's either apostle george monday to friday uh, to thursday pastor grace uh, friday to sunday and then in the evening of sunday we have two sessions from 5 30 to about six after six another one up to seven so please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it we also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at aklife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.